Who here remembers being five years old, packing your bag, and triumphantly marching all the way to the end of the street? Because your parents had really crossed the line by not letting you have that third Oreo. <laughs> what about, for many of us here, the excitement of getting our driver's license for the first time? Yeah, sure, you shared your mom's car, but you could totally go to the mall whenever you wanted now. If your mom didn't need her car and you'd done your chores. Or maybe you can recall the feeling of leaving for college the first time. The sensation of being pressed back into your plane seat and seeing your hometown fade in the window. Or turning off your street, all your belongings in the back of your car, and watching your house shrink in the rearview mirror. Let's take a second to think. What do these moments mean to all of us? Yes, surely it speaks to our thirst for growth and change, and perhaps a little to our love of sugar, but beyond that, there's something much deeper that drives these fundamentally human experiences. Whether it's in a plane, in a car, or on our own two feet, mobility seems inextricably linked to our personal identities. But why is this? What motivates our triumphant march to the end of the street? Our first solo trip to the mall? Our voyage to college freshman year? At its core, it's got to be something much deeper than the fact that Oreos taste really, really good. It's about independence. Independence driven by mobility. This is why I think the coming autonomous vehicle revolution is so important. I'm currently a senior at the University of Michigan studying computer science engineering and working as a software engineering manager at the university's M-City Autonomous and Connected Vehicle Test Environment, an outdoor lab where researchers and companies alike come to test the latest in autonomous and artificially intelligent technologies. When I tell my friends and family about my job, they love to make predictions about just what this autonomous future will look like. Oh boy, they say. I can't wait to send texts or email on my way to work or read the newspaper on my commute. To which I reply, Maria, don't pretend like I haven't already seen you texting and driving. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, responses like these seem indicative of our hopes and dreams for autonomous vehicles in general. A minor convenience here, some save time there, but that's not how I see it. Autonomous vehicles provide an incredible leap forward in terms of mobility. Specifically, for a group that often struggles with independence, the elderly and disabled. Their stories hit close to my heart. My cousin Jessica has rheumatoid arthritis and has been in a wheelchair since she was five. My grandfather, before passing away earlier this year, was in a wheelchair for the last few years of his life. This is where the true value of autonomous vehicles and artificial intelligence lie. In building an inclusive world that provides independence through mobility, for those that are often forced to go without. The rideshare space in particular is an area ripe to reap the benefits of this change. Thanks to the companies like Uber, Lyft, and others, in recent years, the world has dramatically contracted. For a lot of us, anywhere feels a click away. This isn't always the case for the elderly and disabled. Uber has been sued repeatedly for not providing proper access to accessible rides. But let's think. What would have to go right in order to get a properly accessible Uber ride? Firstly, you need a driver who owned an accessible vehicle, a rarity in itself. That driver, or that vehicle rather, would have to be properly fit to the specific needs of that passenger. And then that driver would have to forego picking up other individuals in order to spend the extra time helping an elderly or disabled individual into and out of the vehicle. This rarely happens. And because of this, often the elderly and disabled are relegated to paratransit, which in many municipalities is often understaffed and underfunded. This is where the periphery of technologies we test at M-City are most valuable. One could imagine a fully autonomous future where a rideshare company like Uber and Lyft owns an entire fleet of autonomous vehicles and simply dispatches one when a rider requests a ride. It would be much easier to mandate a set number of accessible vehicles in that fleet than to simply try and sign up enough human drivers who happen to own accessible vehicles. But that's just the beginning. What do we mean when we talk about an accessible vehicle of the future? After all, once the passenger is in the vehicle, getting them from point A to point B is probably the easiest part of the trip. What about the operator that helps them into and out of the vehicle? That's where technologies like LiDAR and computer vision come in. LiDAR is like radar, but instead of using radio, wave to map, radio waves to map its surroundings, it uses lasers. And computer vision refers to the artificially intelligent algorithms that are used to process this visual data. A fleet like this is already being tested out of lab at Texas A&M, complete with a smartphone application that users can use to register their specific accessibility requirements. 
I remember when I was thinking about writing the conclusion to this speech, I didn't know how. I remember rereading and rereading my presentation, and it read like a research paper. There was no passion behind what I was saying. I remember calling my dad to vent. He asked me a simple yet profound question. Why do I care? Instead of talking about my cousin Jessica or my grandfather, I remember I paused. I hesitated. I don't know, I said. And really, I didn't. Sure, I'd been around the elderly and disabled my entire life, even in my own family, but for some reason, I didn't understand. I didn't really know what it was like. And maybe it was the experimental engineer in me, but I had an idea. I packed up my laptop, left the library, and went to go rent a wheelchair. I spent about four hours in that wheelchair around the U of M campus, and even in that short time, I experienced almost everything I talked about in my speech. I remember picking up the wheelchair from Dexter and thinking it would be a cool idea to take paratransit to get back. There were no paratransit stops around me. I looked for an Uber ride. There were no accessible vehicles. Hmm. What I decided to do was just call a normal Uber. It took my driver 20 minutes to get, the, to get the wheelchair back into the car. I remember getting back to campus and having the driver ask me where I'd like to be dropped off. Oh, just anywhere over here is fine, I said. Just over here anywhere wasn't fine. He dropped me by the hospital at the bottom of a giant hill next to a steep curve. In that moment, I began to understand. I began to understand what it felt like to feel your independence start to shrink. We began to understand the true value of autonomous vehicles and artificial intelligence. They're not some new tech gimmick, some new trinket. They're a powerful, powerful tool that has the ability to provide independence, mobility, and dignity to the elderly and disabled like never before. Thank you.